fans of the band The Black Crows wondered if they'd ever witness this again. Brothers Chris and Rich Robinson in harmony on stage. How is this feeling? This event or me and Rich being together? <laughs> that. <laughs> it's really nice. After a brief acoustic tour, they're getting ready to take the Black Crows on the road again. I think for Rich and I to spend that time together, you know, we sat on airplanes together. We never did that. We did interviews. We're doing this. We yeah. never did these things. Together before. Not really. A swaggering southern rock band, the Black Crows broke out in the early 90s. Older brother Chris, the front man, Rich, two years younger, the guitarist and principal songwriter. But the brothers fought bitterly, and after it all came apart in 2013, swore they'd never even speak again. When you reconnected, who called who? We didn't really call each other. We didn't see each other. The first time we saw each other was randomly we're here in New York at the same hotel. How long had it been? About seven years. Seven years. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Did you have to decide that you could live with each other again? I feel like our, the whole of our existence, we always just kind of grabbed hold of the train, just hopped on, it just yeah. kind of went with it. Yeah. There's just an understanding that Chris and I have always had. I mean, you know, people have asked, like, did you guys make the decision? Well, Chris and I never sat down at a table and let's start a band and let's do this. We just did it. Yeah. The Robinsons were raised in suburban Atlanta. Chris was the expeditionary. He would go out and take, he would bring in all the new stuff and I would listen through the wall. And then when he'd go to school, I would take the one that I wanted to hear and then put it in my room. I mean, it's still, it's it. still kind of that way. Their debut album, Shake Your Money Maker, released in 1990, shot into the top 10. Shake Your Money Maker really was kind of like a rocket ship for you guys, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it changed everything. The album went on to sell more than five million copies. When we left home, when the record was coming out, I mean, and we each had basically one carry-on bag. Mm -hmm. I had two shirts and a pair of cowboy boots. And then, you know, 12 months later, like, oh, you can buy homes and cars. By 1991, they were playing the Monsters of Rock tour with Metallica and ACDC. We go up and, uh, and we do our thing. If you dig it, cool. If you don't, you may dig it later. You know, who cares? That September, they played before an estimated audience of 1.6 million at a Moscow airfield, a month after the Soviet coup. That's where I first interviewed Chris Robinson. It's just a wild place. It's really wild. I think if most people in the United States saw what was really over here, they'd freak, you know? Their follow-up album, The Southern Harmony and Musical Companion, soared to number one. But the brothers became their own worst enemies. Nothing could have stopped that band except for that band, said their former drummer, Steve Gorman who wrote in his recent memoir, Hard to Handle, I wanted to kill both of them. Rich and I fought on stage, you know, fought at the gigs. We fought on the bus. We fought in the van. We fought backstage. But we never fought while we were writing the songs. That's when Rich and I were completely uh, in harmony about what we wanted to right. do, you know. Why did you fight so much? I think it's just a typical sort of brother thing. He can be aggressive, and I can be really passive aggressive. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we both have our own ways of going about this. And so the fights were us trying to figure out, uh, or at least me trying to figure out, like, who I was. And, and while Rich is like that, I'm completely out of my mind. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm out of my mind, and then you add drugs and alcohol into the whole thing, and I'm, like, really cooking with gas at this point. <laughs> The brothers both launched successful solo careers, but ultimately each found something missing. You know, and the reality is, is like we need each other to make that engine go. Am I, 
ego, right or wrong or whatever, I was kind of like, I don't need him. I can go sing these songs without him mm -hmm. and see if I can, you know, see what will happen. But you do need him. I do. How do you know this is going to work this time? You know, musically, it will always work. For a myriad of reasons, we want this to work. We want this to work for us, but we want this to work for, you know, music and for our history, where we came from, what we're doing, moving forward. For Rich and I to repair our relationship as brothers and as a family, it just so happens that it's in the backdrop of this music that we've created.